Hey YouTube, Rick the Welder back after a very long delay and boy let me tell you I am super glad to be back. Since you guys last saw me I've been working at an oil refinery on a shutdown with this group of guys right here, Team 1886. If any of you guys are watching, a great big hello and it's been awesome meeting you guys and I hope to work with you again real soon. Got the great hat, got a bunch of great memories. Unfortunately also got a wrist injury while I was at the refinery so basically it was a whole bunch of welding wrist injury, then a whole bunch of not welding, but it's all healed up and I'm ready to get back at her. In and amongst all of these things that have been going on, I've been working hard on the garage and boy has it ever changed. So let me be the first to introduce you to the new and extremely improved Rick's Garage. Let's take a walk inside and take a look around. First thing I want to show off to you guys is this logo. I've actually got my own logo now. I am super, super excited the way this turned out. I cannot thank Raz over at Vehicle Graphics enough. He did an absolutely outstanding job. I mean, look at this. It turned out better than I could have ever even hoped for. And surprisingly, and with the help of YouTube, it has actually been very easy to apply this thing. So look for a clip in a future video of how I put this up on the wall. I think the colors that we chose for the logo fit the garage very nicely. And as you guys can see, I've got my two-tone wall separated with my two racing stripes just for that extra nice hot rod look. A far cry from the boring blue that was there not long ago. Let's take a look on this side of the garage. All right, in this corner of the garage, I've got all my paints and solvents and everything organized on a nice refurbished shelf that I had previously in the other corner of the garage. Got a nice rack set up for all of my welding jackets, motorcycle jacket, helmet, etc. Keeps it all nice and out of the way. Thanks to Daver for trading me for the TV that I've got mounted up on the wall so I can pull up YouTube tutorials about anything that I need to look up while I'm working as well the other good thing is I was able to find a whiteboard that perfectly covers up that useless window that I wasn't using so now I can keep track of notes and to do lists and so on and so forth. If we swing the camera around slightly you'll also see a new 240 heater that Dave Sanchez put in. I built a nice custom swinging arm mount so that that allows the heater to pivot and swing away from the wall to get some air circulation behind it gets the room nice and hot. I found during the winter that once the temperature is up to what it's set to, it usually cycles about a 10 minute on, 10 minute off, so it's really easy on the build. You can see the new breaker panel that Dave has put in, keeps everything on its own circuit, modernizes everything, makes it a whole lot easier. Now, you can see behind me that there's a welding power source, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail with that because there's still a few components that I need to make setup complete. We'll leave it at that for now, but I have also put some cable reels on the wall and that'll help me keep everything organized on this side. All right, let's spin a quick 180 and take a look at the other side of the garage. Something I'm particularly proud of, only because of the amount of work that was involved in making them, is my new storage cabinets. Again, a huge thank you to Daver yeah. for hooking me up with these cabinets. They have come a long way. These are the old ones that he had in his garage. They've got some new cabinets, pass these on to me. These originally looked like this. Boring, old, plain. With a little bit of router work and some tinted plexi, along with some soft closed doors. I think they look great, they serve the purpose, cleans the whole thing up really, really nicely. It was a heap of work, but I think the end result is definitely worth the effort. And along with the welding stuff, those of you with a keen eye probably noticed the argon bottle in the corner. That's gonna have my TIG torch set up. And don't you worry, there's gonna be some welding coming very, very soon. And then flipping around, you guys remember the workbench, of course. All right, we did a video on that. Now that it's got the stainless steel top on, that's where the TIG welder is gonna come in handy. Put that nice little edge around the front and the sides. It's gonna turn out real nice. 
As well, the other advantage is because of those nice big caster wheels on that workbench, I can slide it right out to the edge of the workspace. So if I have something on the TV that I need to watch while I'm working, I have that space available to me as well. And to finish the garage off, what's cleaned it up immensely is this absolutely new wonderful epoxy floor that I put down. It's a product from Benjamin Moore. It is a waterborne epoxy. It's two-part, mix it up, and basically rolls on like paint. It is an absolute heap of prep work, and I think that is really what makes or breaks the job, is in the prep. As long as you've got all the prep work done, your floor is clean, your floor is degreased, the product will actually stick to the concrete. If you don't have the proper prep work done, this stuff will last only a matter of maybe a year. It'll start peeling up. All of the product literature that I've been reading, it says that if it's been done properly, you should be looking at anywhere from a five to 10 year lifespan for this product, which in all honesty for me and the amount of work that's involved in it is just fine. I'm sure I've forgotten a whole bunch of stuff to show you guys, but not to worry. As we keep going and working in the garage, you guys will get a much more in-depth look at what I've done and what we're going to be doing on future videos. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. Again, Team 1886, a big what's up to anybody who's watching, and I'll see you guys again real soon.